Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. This is the second episode I'm doing on creating proxy media. Creating proxy helps you speed up the editing process. It takes files that are very large, sometimes like 8K worth of footage, like if you shoot on the red uh, Helium camera or anything above that, like the V-Raptor, uh, or other cameras that can shoot up to 8K, uh, insane amount of resolution and sometimes that footage will kind of drag on your machine it's too big it's too large has too much color data just to, to edit uh, smoothly uh, you can create proxies and make a smaller version of those files and do the editing and then replace them with the higher quality media later on very easily the last episode I went through and showed you how to kind of do that this automated and keep in mind this is a proprietary function inside of Premiere Pro if you want this media to work if you want to create proxies that work in other editing software through media encoder or through premiere this media will not work and you will be able to edit it you just won't be able to relink it it's very proprietary inside of premiere there is an old school pro, uh, proxy workflow that i will cover that is still used as a standard today uh, that i will cover in a future episode but right now keep in mind when you're creating proxies in this proprietary method you have to have the high quality media present and the uh, proxy media present for premiere to, to switch to the proxy and then switch back to the high quality media so I've got several different types of footage here. In the previous episode, I showed how to convert these files to proxies that had either stereo audio or no audio. In this instance, when they shot on the RED camera, uh, usually if you shoot on the RED camera, most uh, cinematographers will make sure that the, the audio is turned off and you're not recording any sort of audio channels inside the RED camera, at least inside like the RED Helium, the RED V-Raptor, any of the newer cameras that you're shooting on. Uh, cinematographers oftentimes shut the audio off and just record a visual. So the media will look like this when you import it into Premiere. It just has a film strip. Uh, if it has a film strip and an audio waveform, that means audio is attached. So there's really no reason to shoot audio with a drone because all it's going to pick up is like the helicopter sound. So that just records video and, not, and no audio. Usually cinema cameras, if you're shooting on film, the film does not pick up audio. So usually when that's been transferred digitally, you're not going to have audio attached. It's going to look more like this, just like a film strip here with no audio. But this red footage, uh, they unintentionally shot audio onto it. So when we proxy this, we have to be aware of that. If I, I, like I mentioned, uh, that if you just right click on media and go to proxy and go to create proxies, these presets in here are very automated, very easy. But the problem with these automated uh, presets is it reads if it has audio, it just converts it to a stereo file. If it has no audio, then it just dumps the audio off and doesn't have audio. So that works well for footage that has no audio or stereo audio. If we go down and select the red file, one of the red files here, you'll notice this recorded into mono files. So this does not work well in the Premiere Pro proprietary proxy workflow. Wow, that was alliteration. Uh, anyway, it'll convert this to a stereo file to the proxy file if you do that automated uh, method there. And then later on when you try to connect it, this is what happens. I did the conversion to this red media, ejected my drive, took it to another uh, system, took it to a, a PC. Uh, rather than on my Mac here, and open up the project file. When you open it up, it tells you that it cannot find the ones that were converted from mono to stereo. It basically, it tells you that the audio properties do not match, and therefore it will not relink the proxy, these proxy files back to the high-quality media, and that's a problem. So you're okay using this if you're staying on the exact same system and it, it, it for some reason it ignores it when it's on the same system if the audio properties don't match. But when you move from system to system, if you move from one Mac to another or a Mac to a PC or a PC to Mac, it will not, not let you reconnect those files. And in my opinion, this is a problem. What I think Premiere Pro needs to do is detect the, uh, the nature of the audio files needs to detect the nature of those audio files and base uh, the proxy media off of the matching audio files. So this is going to be the more advanced way of creating uh, proxy files. We are going to create an ingest setting for this specific media here. So I'm gonna open Media Encoder. All right, so now I am inside of Media Encoder here and they have a bunch of uh, presets already uh, set up inside of this uh, software here. They have Apple ProRes, they have H.264, they have a whole bunch of different codecs, tons of different presets all ready to go, but we're going to create a custom preset. There's a difference between what they call encoding presets and ingest presets. You have to create, this is a, a kind of an extra step that I wish Premiere would help get rid of this, but uh, ingest presets are ones that are going to be used inside of Premiere Pro's proxy workflow. You have to create an ingest preset, but you have to base the ingest preset off of a, a, an existing encoding preset, which is really stupid. So most of these are encoding presets and we're going to create, uh, we're going to generate an ingest uh, preset based off of those here. And then we're going to send that over to Pre Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go up here and put it on the plus and we're going to first start off by creating an encoding preset for the red media. 
So I'm going to hit that and it brings up this window ready to go uh, to set my new preset. I need some information before I do that. So I'm going to go to Premiere Pro and I'm going to look at my red media. One thing that you want to do now, one nice thing that the automated, uh, the automated Premiere Pro uh, create proxy function does is it reads uh, your resolution and it maintains your aspect ratio. Because here we have two different aspect ratios. If we look at our media uh, from our Sony a7S II, which is 3840 by 2160, which is called UHD. Uh, and then if we select our drone footage here, we have 4096 by 2160. So this is your 4096 is your horizontal resolution and 2160 is your vertical resolution. So you have 4096 pixels across and 20, uh, 2160 pixels up and down, which gives you kind of a wide aspect ratio. UHD is a little less wide than that. It is 3840 by 2160. Sometimes people inappropriately call this uh, 4K, but it's not truly 4K. This is truly 4K right there, and this is called UHD or ultra high definition. But this is going to have a less wide aspect ratio. If we look at this footage here, it's going to have a less aspect aspect ratio. Watch this when I double click on the 4K footage, it's going to go a little bit wider. So watch watch this as I double click. It just went wider. So that's a wider aspect ratio. This is what they would call a cinematic aspect ratio. This is what they call 1.89 to 1. If you simplify these numbers down here where you take the lower number and simplify it to 1, what would this be? What would the higher number be proportionately? The way you can figure that out is through math. And you divide the higher number by the lower number and it gives you your aspect ratio. 4096 divided by 2160 gives me 1.89. That would be, uh, so for every 1.89 pixels you have going left and right, horizontally, you have one pixel up and down. So that's a 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio, which is also 40, the same as 4096 to 2160 aspect ratio, just simplified. Whereas UHD is 3840 by 2160, and if we simplify that, it gives us a 1.77 to 1 aspect ratio. They round this up for some reason, and they call it 1.78 to 1, which is not as wide as 1.89 to 1. So once again... So here is our 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio, and here is our 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio. So when we set these manual settings inside of Media Encoder to uh, create a specific ingest preset for Premiere Pro to create the proxies, we want to maintain aspect ratio. And this red media happens to be 5K, 5120 by 2560. Let's figure out what that aspect ratio is. 5120 divided by 2560 gives us a uh, two to one aspect ratio. So this is more, uh, this aspect ratio is a kind of an odd aspect ratio. This was, uh, it, it's considered, there's a, a lot of music videos that choose the two to one aspect ratio for some reason. Uh, I think they don't want to have it, uh, they, uh, they want to have a cinematic aspect ratio without it looking super, super wide. The next one to jump to from 1.89 to one would be a 2.40 to one, which is super wide and is only kind of meant for big epic movies. So I think music videos kind of want to have that, that wide aspect ratio without being too wide. So they stop at two to one and two to one is kind of an aspect ratio that, like I said, has been chosen by music for a lot of music videos for some reason. So we want to maintain that aspect ratio. So uh, here's a little trick uh, to get this down one quarter the size. So we want to take this resolution down uh, to somewhere around like one quarter the size, which will speed things up, speed up the editing process. And then a quick way of doing that is basically taking your numbers that you have right here already and cutting them in half. That will give you one quarter the resolution. So if we go 5120 divided by two equals 2560. Then we take 2560 and divide that by two. 2560 divided by two equals 1280. So the resolution that we're going to be using is going to be 2560 by 1280, which is one quarter of the resolution of this. Even though we cut these down by uh, by half, th these are compounding numbers when you're timesing here. So let, let's let's show you the total amount of pixels that we have. If we go 5120 times 2560, that is 13 million pixels. So that's a lot of pixels. That per every image has a total of 13 million pixels. In fact, to show you what a pixel is here, I've, I've opened up a still image inside of Photoshop here. And this uh, photo here has a resolution of 4,096 pixels going left and right and uh, 2,160 pixels going up and down, 2,160 pixels. If we start zooming in on this here, uh, as we get closer and closer, we, so we'll start to notice like a kind of a dip in the, in the quality of the image. As we get closer and closer and closer, now we start seeing all of a sudden uh, pixels. These are individual pixels here. Each one of these, this is just a, or each, this picture is just made up of a whole bunch of different square images that have different levels of hue, saturation, and luminance uh, with, within each pixel. And this we have, if you go count from the very top and go across these pixels, you have 4,096 pixels across and 2,160 pixels up and down. 
Uh, when you times those together, you're going to get your total pixel count for this image here specifically here. So we can find out how many pixels we have in this image by going to our calculator and times in 4096 by 2160, this image has a total of uh, over 8 million pixels. So 8 million of those squares in this one little image right, right here. So once again, when we've cut these numbers in half, 5120 in half and 2560 in half, to 2560 by 1280, you're literally compounding and shrinking this by one quarter of the resolution. Let's check that out really quick. 5120 times 2560 gives us over 13 million pixels. Then when we've cut those numbers in half, 2560 times 1280, we get around 3 million pixels. So that is significantly less. That's like a quarter of the amount of pixels that we have up here. And then the other thing that you need to know to match these properties and not have that issue uh, with relinking them when you move from machine to machine is the nature of the audio. And once again, this is not a stereo file. This has two mono files, basically. Stereo file means it's sending one channel off to the left speaker only and one channel off to the right speaker only. These are two mono files, which uh, each file, if it has audio on it, will send audio to both left and right. That's what they call centered audio. Then the last important thing that you need to know is your frame rate right here. And you have to match the frame right here. We have some footage that's at 24 frames per second, and then we have some media that is at 23.976. Like I said, you could just do the easy right click and create, create the proxy function right here. And since it's got stereo file, it'll treat this as that's just fine. But since we have these different ones, like I said, if you're shooting on an Atomos, if you're shooting on a RED, if you're shooting on some Panasonic cameras, there's a lot of cameras that will record mono ch channels rather than a stereo channel. And that's great if you're using these cameras as documentary cameras or regular industrial cameras and you're recording audio into the cameras. If you're doing more than one microphone, you can have a mono channel per microphone. And that way it's not sending one microphone to the left or one microphone to the right, which you have to fix when you bring it into post-production. So off to media encoder here. So we're gonna create a new preset. I'm gonna make this one specifically for my red camera. I'm gonna call this red. I'm gonna call it two mono. Uh, to remember, I'm making this for my red two mono and I can even call this for my 5K camera, for my 5K footage. 5k and i'm going to call this preset so that's going to match my presets in here after i'm finished creating this preset we have to create an ingest so i'm going to separate this by calling this a preset specifically format i'm going to use the smoothest co uh, codec possible which is prores so we're going to go under quicktime that's a quicktime file so i'm going to choose quicktime and then based on the preset here we're going to choose apple prores 422 proxy this is a really smooth really nice uh, optimized media that is uh, edits really well on PCs, especially in Premiere Pro, uh, and it uh, edits really well on Macintosh, as, on Macs as well. We're going to export both video and audio here. If this was red that was shot without audio, I was shot without audio, I could just uncheck that, but we're going to do export audio. Moving down here, under under the video tab, we're going to make sure it, it is still under Apple ProRes Proxy. Uh, now, we don't want this to match based on the source here. We want to choose our own resolution. And that resolution that we chose was, and I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to make sure that this is unlocked here, so it doesn't uh, proportionally affect my resolution as I change it here. I want to choose my own resolution. I'm going to uncheck that, and I'm going to set this at 2560 by 1280 as my resolution, and that'll keep that two to one aspect ratio. Frame rate, I don't want to. Uh, you could do based on source, but I'm just going to make sure that this is dialed in at the exact frame rate rate that I want, and I'm going to do 23.976 based on the old 24 frames per second broadcast time code field order and aspect. This is pixel aspect ratio. We don't need to change any of those because these are uh, square pixels that we're using with the red camera. They're not stretched pixels like anamorphic footage. We're, we're just going to leave those check marked there and it won't do anything. Okay, our video settings are set. We've got our custom resolution. We're going to go to audio here. Uh, under audio, this is where it's really important and this is where the Oftentimes, if you don't mismatch the resolution, it will not have trouble relinking the, the proxies back to the high quality media, but this will here. So this is really super important. So, um, and also frame rate, frame, frame rate and these audio properties are what, what are going to shut you down in the end here. So I'm going to go down to my audio channel configuration and I'm going to choose, uh, make this one a mono channel. I'm going to scroll up and say, I want this one stream of audio to be a mono channel. And now I can go down here, I can add one more down to this little plus button right here on the right hand side hit plus and it will add one more mono for me now i'm matching the audio properties of the red okay we're almost set here there's one other thing that i want to do and this is optional when i grab my red footage and drop it into the timeline right now this looks very very flat this is what is called a log profile here or, or what they call a lookup table or a look uh, right now the camera red footage is defaulting to a log look this is raw data and you uh, basically a lut or a look is telling the, uh, the the media 
what to do or what to look like. And right now it's under this very flat profile, which preserves a lot of details in the highlights and in the darks. But I want to have this uh, for, for my editor. I don't want to have this ugly flat look. I want to have a, a nice contrasty colorful look to hand off to the editor when the one I give the editor my proxy files here or if I'm editing myself I hate to edit in, in log footage I like to have that kind of all that cinematic look already added to this I'm going to go up to window and I'm going to go under my lumetri color panel here it'll add it to the side of my file here and uh, any camera that, that shoots in log which is almost any camera professional camera these days your black magic uh, your DJI cameras your Sony's will have the capability of shooting in log, which I said preserves all the details in the highlights and in the darks, rather than kind of crushing them like a lot of compressed cameras do. Uh, so I'm going to go to my basic correction here. I'm going to pull down the input LUT, and I'm going to... These, these LUTs, by the way, are available online if you search any specific camera. If you search for a specific camera and their LUT packages, usually on their websites, they will have these uh, LUTs that you can download for free and install here. So I've downloaded some red ones here. I'm going to open up my red LUTs here. I'm going to go into the one that, that converts log to Rec 709 that adds a 709 look, which is basically an end user kind of a saturated, a nice level of saturation, nice level of contrast. And let's try out my super color right here. We're going to try our super color to, to Rec 709. The Rec 709 is going to be that very contrasty and colorful look, uh, but it, and that's the way it's going to treat this red footage here. So it's added. That looks much better. I love that look right there. We're going to use that. But uh, I just did this inside of Premiere here, but in Media Encoder, I have that downloaded LUT file, that super color LUT, LUT file that we can add, and it will compress it and add that LUT to this. So I'm going to go under Effects here. We're going to go under Effects, and we're going to go to Lumetri Look or LUT right here. Uh, we're going to check mark this, and we're going to add our own look. I'm going to go up, pull this down, and here's a list of a whole bunch of different uh, LUTs that are pre-installed that you can use. But I'm going to choose the red one, which will accurately treat the colors and the, and the contrast based off of the color science of the camera. So I'm going to hit select and it will bring up my browser window here. And now I can navigate to where I've got my LUTs in this folder right here. And now I can select the red LUTs, go to the Rec 709 ones, and I'm going to select that super color one right there. And it will add it to all my red media once I, uh, once I proxy that media there. One other thing you could do is you could add a watermark to this. I'm not going to be too concerned about that because you have the option of adding the watermark checkmark inside of Premiere Pro. So we don't de need to do that inside of Media Encoder. We'll do it later when we when we use the Create Proxies feature inside of Premiere Pro. So I'm going to hit OK and it has now generated that preset down here under my other uh, user presets and groups. I have that file that I've added there. So now we're going to create an ingest setting based off of this preset here. So I'm going to go under this add and we're going to do an ingest preset. I'm going to call this the same name here. We're going to call this red to mono and I'll call this proxy. And now I'll call this ingest. So I know that that is an ingest setting that I'm going to send over to Premiere. Uh, with this, we're going to move down and we're going to do transcode files to destination. So this will be for proxy, proxy creation, which is transcoding it to a different codec here. Uh, you can choose a destination, but then it ignores it when you take it to Premiere for some reason. Uh, but I'm gonna, I've got my proxy. I've got a folder that I'm using for all my proxies. I'm just going to choose that folder. But later on, it makes you set it again in Premiere. Not sure why. Uh, and then you're going to pull down the format. And I'm going to go down to QuickTime. Under QuickTime, it'll bring open already the presets. It'll bring open the presets that are in the software and any custom presets that I created. This is the only one right now. So I'm going to check mark the red, the red 2 Mono 5K preset. And I've named it, got it set for QuickTime, and it's using the ProRes proxy based on the settings there and all the effects that I've added to it, the, the LUT and also the burned in time code. And now I'm going to hit OK. Now that I've got that, we have to export this to, for we, so we can use it inside of Premiere. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to Export Presets. I'm going to bring up in this window, ask me why I want to save it. I'm just going to save it right here uh, in, in my production folder. So that, that's exactly what I want it to be called. I'm going to save it and it's exported out of Media Encoder. I'm going to hide media encoder, go back to Premiere, and finally we're set up to where we can start creating proxies. So I'm going to highlight my red footage here, and now I'm going to right click and go to proxy and create proxies. And now right here, I'm going to add my ingest preset. I'm going to click on this. It'll bring open my finder window to search here. And uh, there it is right there. It's in my production folder. I'm going to hit that and hit open. And it's added that preset. Now that preset is there specifically for the red. It's going to create those two mono channels. This is only going to be used for this red media of this resolution that I'm using. Then right down here, I'm going to browse. I've already got it pre-selected as my proxy folder. It's a folder I've created just for loading my proxies into. One thing that I've discovered in the, in the newer Premiere update, and this didn't happen before in the earlier version of this, 
is uh, this here overrides the preset uh, resolution. So rather than do, the, do that, I'm going to choose uh, custom. Even though I set it in this ingest preset, it does ignore it, unfortunately. So now I can type in my custom resolution right here, which we did in media encoder. So I'm going to go 2560 by 1280. Everything else, it will bring over the LUT from it, but let's hit OK. And it will create those jobs. And it will send it over to media encoder, and it will begin encoding this media here. I showed this in the last episode as well. I like to see that proxy uh, meta display, metadata display up here. So I right click and go to metadata display. I'm going to search proxy and I'm going to check mark this bottom proxy one right there. You can check mark the other ones if you want. I just like the proxy one to see when they are finished. I'm going to hit OK. And it usually puts it at the end of my metadata display over here. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag it over. I like it closer. Uh, so I'm going to put it right there while I'm encoding. And now it says that these files are offline, which means they are currently encoding. Once those are finished, as each one finishes, it will say attached, attached, attached. So go back to media encoder. I'm going to look at this. As soon as this is done encoding, I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay, as this file gets to, uh, close to completing here, let's go back to Premiere and look at this. Watch this, and boom, that one just changed to attached right there. So that one has attached, and now it will keep encoding these, and it'll go attached, attached, then you'll know when all your footage has, been, has finished encoding. So while that's encoding the other stuff, I'm going to create a timeline and just look at my media right here. So I drop it in, and right now my media still shows in, um, in this flat profile. Right now it is reading the high-quality media. You can change the size of this here. Uh, so what I can do is go down to my little proxy switch right here, and now this will just switch right to my proxies right when I click on this. Boom, it just switched to my proxy. It's got a little watermark. Oh, by the way, I did bring that watermark in there. If you go to the uh, Create Proxy window here, I did have this Add Watermark checkmarked. So it is adding that burn mark in there, and it obviously has the LUT uh, burn to it. So now this will be super, super smooth. This is gonna, this footage is going to edit very, very smooth. It's gonna be very fast and very smooth. Let's grab my other files, drop it here in the timeline, grab all my media, drop it in the timeline here. And uh, so there my footage is displaying the LUT, the watermark, and here it's not yet because it is still encoding that file. Once this is done encoding, it'll suddenly appear. And there it goes. It just finished, it says attached, and it just displayed the LUT. So now when you click this, that this is the original footage right here. This is my original 5K footage, and this is my compressed one quarter of the size footage for my red cha channel. What I want to do is uh, don't do this and edit it. Don't ever do this. It's kind of dangerous. You use your Premiere Pro switch like this to toggle the proxies in and out, but I am going to import one of these proxy files just to look at it. Once again, don't do this and don't edit this footage because it will not relink back to the original footage if you do this. But now this file here, if I select it, shows the properties up here. This is 2560 by 1280 resolution. Frame rate is 23.976. It matches it. The time code actually matches perfectly as well, and that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, and right here we have two mono channels. So that is the that matches the nature of my original footage there. I'm going to select this, delete it. I don't want to mess with that. I just want to, want to show you the settings in here. Now, one other benefit for doing this sort of pro proxy workflow, even if this is so very automated with your, like a, with your Blackmagic footage, with your drone footage that has either a stereo file or no audio, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, you can make these custom presets. One thing that it doesn't do when you select all your footage like this and right click and go to proxy and create proxies is it will not add a LUT for you. You have to do that. You have to make it uh, go through the process that I just showed you to add a LUT to, to it. That way, when you switch between like this, you don't have to do any color grading to edit your proxy footage. It's already been color graded. It's not perfectly color graded. It's just added a look to it, but that's better than looking at this here at this flat footage. So let's do that one more time. Let's do it for the, the Blackmagic raw footage. If I drop this raw footage into its own timeline here, this is also very flat. This is log footage here. It's displaying in log footage here which a lot of raw footage does, especially when you're using raw footage, will display it in this log format, very flat, so it preserves the highlights and the darks. So let's look at these settings really quick. We've got a 4096 by 2160, one quarter of the resolution, I can tell you already, uh, without doing the math, is uh, 2048 by 1080. That's the, that's the size we're gonna take it down to, one quarter of the resolution, but this is stereo, so we're gonna keep it stereo, but we're gonna add our own LUT here. So I'm gonna go to media encoder, and we're going to add a new encoding preset first, and then we'll create an ingest pr preset based off the encoding preset that we create. And I'm going to call this Blackmagic Stereo with LUT, and we'll call this a preset. I choose QuickTime. We're going to go ProRes Proxy. Uh, this has, uh, does have audio. The, the default audio setting is at stereo, so that's fine. Uh, but now we can go to effects and we can add our LUT to this. So I'm going to go under the Lumetri look here. We're going to pull this down. We're going to hit select, and we're going to choose 
our black magic light. And I've got one here that I downloaded from the internet for free here. And here are our black magic 4K, 6K utility LED, which converts it to a Rec. 709 look. So I'm gonna hit open. We've added that to that as well. And that's pretty much all we have to do. I mean, we can choose the time code if we want to. I'm not going to, because uh, Premiere Pro does burn in the watermark if you select that. So I'm gonna go to video. Though the things that we do have to change here is the uh, is the resolution. This is, and I'm gonna uncheck the, the constraint proportions here. And we're gonna say 2048 by 1080. That's the resolution that we want. Frame rate, I'm gonna make sure that this is, uh, let's look in Premiere. The frame rate here is a true 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna change this to 24. The other stuff I can leave the same here. So, uh, so we should be pretty well set here. Once that's, uh, that's done there, I'm gonna hit okay. It saves that preset there. And now I'm gonna go up to my little uh, create new preset. And we're gonna do an ingest preset based off the black magic here. And we're gonna call this one black magic serial with let ingest because this is going to be my ingest setting based off of that preset so down here we're going to transcode file to, to destination got a local uh, destination chosen quick time is already set for my last uh, setting and i'm going to pull this down and we're going to choose the black magic stereo with let preset and that's going to be our ingest hit okay we'll right click on that we're going to export that preset and we're going to save it right into the same folder here and that's the, and that's the file right there these epr files is what that is saving out as an ingest setting there so I've saved that. We're gonna go back to Premiere. We're gonna select my Blackmagic footage, but don't select the timeline. Now I'm gonna right click and we're gonna to go to Proxy, Create Proxies. Let's do our Add Ingest Preset and I'm gonna import my Blackmagic Stereo. Oops, I misspelled it there, Stero, Stero. that's okay. i uh, select that preset there, it's added it. I am gonna do a custom re re resolution and put this as 2048 by 1080. Add, water, add watermark, sure, it's in the same folder there, and I'm gonna hit okay. They'll send this to media encoder and start encoding it right away. It'll automatically start encoding that footage. And once this is done encoding, we'll come back and take a look at what it's done. Okay, now that the proxies have finished, let's go back to Premiere and look at our footage. Let's grab all of our footage and drop it into our timeline. Drop all that in there. Now we're looking at our footage here. This is looking at the original. Our proxies are not selected right now. So if I go over to the proxy switch here and hit the proxy switch, you can see it switched to the proxies. Uh, and it's at, that, it's at that lower resolution. The footage runs really, really well and smooth and edits really quick and smooth. And if we bring some of this footage in here, and here in my proxy folder is the place where it saved this. If I open this up, if I just open, if I just open one of these clips in QuickTime here, hit Command-I, it will show the information here. It'll show in Premiere. And my resolution is a 2048 by 10 by 1080 there. Uh, it's in ProRes Proxy. Uh, the And if I grab one of these files and drag it into Premiere, which once again, don't do this. This is just, I'm just showing uh, the settings on this clip here. Uh, use your proxy switch to switch back and forth. Uh, don't edit, don't import these proxy footage, just a warning there. But uh, if we look at this here, we've got 2048 by 1080, uh, 24p, and this is in stereo there. So these match the properties here, but this is a smaller, more efficient, more uh, uh, smoother, smoother codec that we can use here. And just to kind of refresh, you don't have to do this unless you're using something with mono channels, if you have stereo channels or the no audio. Uh, I wish Premiere would fix this. Uh, hopefully they will fix it in the future where it detects the nature of those things so you don't have those issues where it won't reconnect when you move to a different system. And also this is very helpful. I like using this method as well because I can uh, add the LUT that I want to and get the look that I want to do the proxy footage just while I'm editing, which is nice. Uh, so you can create these uh, presets or look at my previous episode and it, that shows kind of the easier, quicker way of doing of, of proxying the files to make editing faster in Premiere Pro. Well, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching Chin Fat, and if you have any questions or comments, please post them.